In other news, Boomer Dads driving real estate agents nuts is on the rise. This is hilarious. I read this article the other day. I want to share it with you. Um, I want to read part of the article because I thought one of the stories was pretty funny. And I want to hear your stories in the comments. I want to hear, you know, if, if you've got Boomer Dads interfering with your millennial uh, buyers, talking them out of uh, deals, um, you know, with negotiations or inspections. I know there's a lot of a lot of uh, older dads that come out and actually play like they're going to be the inspector for the house, come out and inspect the house and people end up walking away <laughs> from those deals. I can't, it's just hilarious. But, uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments. Another situation that I find quite often is financial advisors, financial advisors. Uh, you know, I'll talk, I'll have a client. They're looking to buy this property. We find the one they're looking for. I spent a lot of time looking and showing and advising. And when it comes time to make an offer, they say, well, let me run this by my financial advisor and come to find out they don't make the offer and they decide to kind of pass. And now's not a good time to buy and stuff like that. So I want to dive into that scenario too with you um, at the end um, and really kind of walk you through that because I have a very interesting perspective on that specific situation. But here's the article right here. It's hilarious. Boomer dads are driving <laughs> real estate agents nuts. And they tell a story here um, about a, an agent trying to sell a townhome. Um, last spring at a townhome showing, uh, this is up in New York, the agent, uh, uh, David Harris was the agent, watched his client, a married millennial with a kid, bounce from room to room before taking a seat on the staged sofa a gesture Harris had come to regard as a cue that the client feels at home and is ready to make an offer. He was right. The client liked the place. Harris suggested to go $50,000 above asking or $1.7 million. He anticipated a bidding war. His client agreed, but the client had to make one phone call. <laughs> we all know who that phone call is. Harris watched as his, as, as his, uh, watched as he went outside and started pacing. And then he takes the cigarette out, Harris says. It was his father. <laughs> that father advised his son they shouldn't go above listing price. Not because he had toured the home and uncovered a flaw or anything of that nature, <laughs> but because he had fixated on the detail he saw online. The house was 18 feet wide. The father believed it was priced as if it were a 20 foot wide property. They insisted on putting in an offer at 1.6 or 50,000 below asking price. The asking price was 1.65. The house ultimately sold for 150,000 more than asking price to someone else. It would have been very nice if they'd listened, Harris said, not only because his client regrets losing that townhome, but because more than a year later, Harris, an agent with Caldwell Banker Wal Warburg, is still taking the same client to showings. And he said, I can't get that time back. Real estate agents aren't paid by the hour, and they're increasingly finding their valuable time being sucked away by boomer dads. <laughs> this is so funny. Um, sure, New York real estate has always been propped up by family money and family opinions, but millennials and Gen Z buyers are learning harder than ever uh, uh, on their uh, leaning harder than ever on their parents for cash at a time when borrowing is expensive and a lack of housing makes cash valuable, a valuable way to cut through the competition. According to about a dozen agents I spoke with, uh, dads have an annoying tendency to present themselves as experts on all aspects of home buying based on their own actual uh, logic. <laughs> sure. Kids can waste time. One broker I spoke uh, with described the hours she spends deflating expectations of million-dollar listing finishes. And so can moms. A Brown Harris Stevens agent had a mom retract an offer over uh, a bag feng sway. <laughs> um, but uh, Harris is in a tricky spot. Counter dad's belief. Okay, now here's where the rubber hits the road, guys. OK, the agent's in a tricky spot. OK, counter dad's belief about the value of the 18 foot white townhome 
and you could lose his trust, which means you're losing his cash and losing the client altogether. I try to always be careful in those moments, Harris said. And that's so true. Right. And we go down to to uh, a couple of other stories here. I'll let you guys read all this stuff. It's just so funny to uh, to to hear this. But let me know in the comments your your dad story, your <laughs> boomer dad inspector uh, story or whatever, um, because this is this is a fact. And I've dealt with a lot of family clients that have family money, families going in on properties together. And you do have to play all sides. You know, you have to, you know, like I've done, I've, you know, it kind of reminds me too of like divorce situations where the husband's mad at the wife and I'm representing the deal and I'm representing both of them. And, you know, I kind of have to play both sides a little bit to really kind of keep the peace between them to get to the closing table, because that in fact is what's best for them. Hell, most of those are court ordered. Um, I've been in a lot of those sticky situations. It came out smelling like a rose. But with this financial advisor, you know, because I had an agent, I'll tell you the story. I had an agent come to me and he said, hey, Ricky, I was talking to this buyer. They talked to the financial advisor. Now they don't want to buy the house. And, you know, he's like, how should I come back at the clients? You know, how can I explain to them that, hey, the financial advisor is just trying to, you know, get you to keep your money with him because he's making money. I said, yeah, but you can't really approach it like that because then they're going to say, well, you're just trying to sell us a house because you're going to make money. And, you know, so it, it goes both ways. I said, I said, the fact of the matter is this, I bet you a million dollars that the financial advisor that's advising them to not buy the house, to keep their money where it is, he and his mind, a hundred percent, 110% believes that that's the best financial move for them. Uh, financially, to leave the money there, let it keep multiplying rather than go buy a piece of property in this uncertain market. Um, there's a lot of legitimacy there. Even in a market that's great, um, a financial advisor may still believe that what he's doing with your money is better than what they could do in real estate. So um, it, there, it's like a it's like a catch-22 there. It's like, which way do you go? The way that I advise my agent about this was that I said, listen, you don't need to discredit the financial advisor. Same way that Harris here doesn't need to discredit the dad and go against the dad here. You know, what you need to do is build those secondary, you know, outside influences up, you know, go with it. Say, listen, um, you know, like, what do you want to do? I understand your financial advisor is advising against this, but what exactly is it that you want to do? Because that's what I'm going to help you do. Here's what I think. You know, let me know what you think and why. And then we can go from there. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to try to. This is what the agent wanted. They wanted me to try to figure out how to tell them how to get them to buy the real estate. And I said, that's the wrong move to try to get them to buy the real estate. That's just not what I do. I don't care if a prospect or a client buys anything or sells anything. I'm just trying to hear them out for what it is they want to do and help them do it. Um, and maintain that relationship forever. I said, if you try to force them into a deal later, when they actually do a deal, they may not come back to you because they're going to remember you tried to force them into a deal this time. And they didn't like that. You know, they forced them into a deal when they weren't ready. Why not, you know, maintain that relationship until the, until the day that they actually do a, an actual transaction so that you're in the best position possible to help them when that day comes. So anyway, that's my two cents on it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I'm going to put another video oh, right fun. here for you to continue watching and learning. And until next time, keep Look. selling. I-35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. 